expect. If you sound the same, but not as good. It's a Weezer cover of Africa. That they should. It was a risky endeavor from the get-go because everybody knows that song. All right, so um, five, three, one. Let's be. Um, where's my planner book thing? I want to show you guys the planning that I'm doing, getting towards the end of the year. Yep. Guys, we're more than halfway through. And and. And we're crazy more than halfway through because the travel that ends our year. So I really want to give that reminder and encouragement to people to like not let yourself dig a hole and like get behind. Um, so if you look at where we are right now, whoop, camera. These, this is my like to-do list, right? So five, three, one is already happening, but this is like my future to-do list. So we have chapter five. This stuff's going to be next week. So like Monday, Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, for, like we'll figure out where to put the chapter five mastery, but it probably won't be next week because we have enough of the chapter still to cover. Chapter six, then, if you like, look at how I'm splitting homeworks because I'm trying to show you guys what to expect as the year goes forward. Then this is CC three checklist. But by the way, when we tell you guys like make checklists, it really helps. We're not just like blowing smoke. We like people really do this. So here's all of like chapter six once we get into after the ones. So six one ones go up to one one four. Or six one four, sorry, it's a little off the screen. Those will group together. But then we have chapter six. Chapter seven is a biggie. Chapter eight and chapter nine. And that's it. That's the whole textbook that we have left. So these little check boxes are me making the worksheets and sending them out to the copy center, which needs to happen. Uh, that's part of my homework over the weekend is to keep catching up and getting ahead. Um, I am continuously making worksheets because this is the first year that I have decided I'm going to worksheet everything. It's going well. You guys, um, your guys' scores from math test this week were really good. Um, math showed bigger growth than language arts, if I'm going to be like, just tell you guys what it looks like. Um, so I think worksheets is really helping you guys. Like, language arts still showed growth. You guys still, like, what we expected, what we wanted. Um, but math was really positive. Like, I was really happy with it. So hopefully, if you took time to look at your results, um, that you were in those goal ranges that, that the test was set for you. Not that we care all that much about the test, but I actually care more about math than I do the Ohio State test, which I should be the opposite because my future score is tied to the Ohio State tests. But I care about your math test because it's based off previous Zach setting goals for this Zach, then setting goals for future Zach, not Zach compared to anybody else. Right? That's why I like math tests. You compared to you. Yes. The state average norm relative to did, 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 or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 Be, hey, be nice. We're recording this. Oh, you didn't say their name. All right. What questions? We'll start with last night's homework five two six. Zach. Actually, they're probably, they're potentially in here if I get it. Oh, I have a question. Oh, wait, never mind. This was, never mind. It wasn't on this one. Never mind. Meredith? I was on 2 A6. <laughs> Darnell is designing a new game. You'll have 110 different colored blocks in a bag. While the person is blindfolded, he or she will reach in and pull the block. Call the block the hands prize. According to Darnell, sign at the right. Boom. If he wants the player to have a 60% probability of winning a small toy, we're going to need to make 60% of this situation relate to the small toy. So in this case, what is small toy? Blue block. Blue block. Thank you, Toby. You're welcome. So out of 110 different colored blocks, the blue ones relate to the small toy. So we are going to calculate what is 60% of 110. Play the 10% trick, rule, whatever you want to call it. What's 10% of 110? 11. 11. Divide by 10, guys. So if we want 10%, we always take the whole amount, divide it by 10. That's 10%. So we get 11. So we're going to do 11 times 6, 66 blue blocks. 
10% probability, well, we just figured out 10%, right? The large stuffed animal is green. If we want 10% chance of that, that's 11. Other questions from your homework? You said five two three step wait five two what? Uh, five two five. Five two five. Seventy three. Sorry, that's what they said. In two thousand nine, the federal government budget was three point one trillion. Um, by the way, if you guys have been keeping up, uh, there's interesting um, news about well, not even news, just interesting. Um, you know, the president saying who even cares about the budget. Um, to me, as a math person, seems like an interesting thing for somebody to say. Uh, so there was there was some information released about how the budget has essentially been blown up in the past couple years. Um, has gotten really, really high, and people are concerned about this. And the president's rebuttal was essentially like, "Who even cares about the budget?" That took when people were like, "You don't need to learn math. They're silly. They don't know anything." Okay. No, you can't say, well, I'm not allowed to say that. 3.1 trillion, that's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of zeros. If, let's say we decided to cut 1%, probably from something silly and unnecessary like education, right? So we're going to cut 1%, which is 0 0.01. Or if we want to do the division to get there, we can just take this value and divide it by 100, because if we want to go from 100% to 1%, that's 1 100th one of it. When we do that, though, we really just chop off two of these zeros to cancel out the zeros on the bottom. What that ends up doing is just shifting my commas. So this comma is actually going to come here, here, here. And what is that new number? 31. Billion, right? So if we go down from trillion, there are three places. So this is T, 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 t trillion, right? These are B, 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 b billions. These are M, 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 m millions. Then we get into the hundreds of thousands. So, so guys, one percent. $31 million. All right, if the government reduced the budget by 7%, well, then we can multiply by 7, right? Once we have the 1%, we can multiply by 7. That comes out to be approximately 200 something million. A lot of money went uh, In the new number, 31 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. Oh yeah, because if it's 31 billion, B, B billions have nine zeros next to it. Uh, there's a chair behind my desk that needs to go here. Guys, that's a wonderful idea. Also, I have some of these, some in the drawer, and some over here. If you are graphing stuff, pay no mind to my dirty screen. If you're graphing stuff and you just need a graph, feel free to grab like a quarter sheet. Um, or just cut your paper and then continue to use distraction. Can I come back here? Yeah, no, in the jar right there. Right there, right there, right there. All my stuff is your stuff. All right, what else? What other questions? Zach, real quick, we have a lesson to get to. 562. That was probably not from this homework, was it? Which homework was it? Which one? 524. Oh, this gets kids every year because you guys can't read. So, friends, we have been talking. Uh, do you know what ad nauseum means? No. Nope. Um, so, great, I get to teach you even more things. 
ad nauseum means like so much you get nauseous, right? So if somebody repeats themselves ad nauseum, so you could say like my baby brother cried ad nauseum last night, like so long, so much it made me nauseous, right? It's just like a phrase. But we have been telling you about reason ad nauseum, right? So many times that it's getting old. A lemonade recipe calls for using the ratio of two cups of lemon juice. Stop your sentence there. Not really a sentence, but like you're highlighting. For every four cups of water, making six cups total. Now, I forget what exactly I put in order, so I cut that out and made you fill that in. But it's... Well, it is still yeast. They're they're just not talking about the sugar. We still have yeast and sugar. But lemon, lemon juice, water, sugar. You can get lemon juice in bigger containers. You're thinking about the little one that looks like a lemon. Yeah. That's not what we're talking about. That's only like a cup or not even. All right, we gotta keep going. The percent. Guys, just do the division. Two out of six, right? Two out of six, not two out of four. Two out of six is a third. What percent is a third? It's 33.3 repeating. And then the other space, the other gap on that space is going to be 66.6. On what? Yeah, what from? 64. Maybe. All right, which one or just like all of it or what? You know why? Because these are getting more difficult because they're using partial numbers. Okay, friends. Who would rather work with whole numbers and decimal numbers? Who did that to you? Why not? It's easy. I can just turn this into 32. Yeah. If I turn this into 120, because I can move both decimals to the right two places. So what multiplies to make 32 and adds to make 120? Ooh, 80 and 40. Now, 80 and 40 makes sense here. But remember, we're thinking in decimals. So what about 0.8 and 0.4? Because a tenth and a tenth make a hundredth fraction or decimal, whatever you want to talk about. So we're 8 tenths times 4 tenths makes 32 hundredths. So like, think in whole numbers, then make them partial numbers. Like when you go to plug them in, think in whole numbers. So this shouldn't be that hard because we're just figuring out what adds with 25 or what adds with 11 to make 25. So I'm hoping 14, and here I'm hoping you have 100. Negative nine, negative seven. Oh crap. Product of 234, sum of 31. I would start near each sum. Hey, here's the trick. Give me your eyes, even if you have this solved. Maybe you just looked up and missed it. So 31, when we split it and we talk about adding, we can do 30 and 1. But that's not going to get a very big product. So start in the middle. Think about 15 and 16. Then go from there. If that doesn't work, drop it down, bring it up. Drop it down, bring it up. So which which of these work? Is it 15, 16? No. It's 13, 18? Start in the middle because we know our product has to be really big. 
If you start on the end, 30 and 1, you're going to be working in for a very long time. One more. Oh, that was two. The 72. Which one's that from? The 72. It's on 5 and 2. It's on 72. Is it the 72, like the Ohio State University? Yes, the 72. I actually just got a sense of that. Three. For Shelly's birthday, she received two new shirts, three new shorts, and two pairs of shoes. Actually, I was just doing a problem like this in Math Counts. Shameless plug at Math Counts this weekend. Y'all should come. There's free donuts. And we do math. So, on Monday, she wants to wear a completely new outfit. So, she's going to pull a brand new. Sure, a brand new shorts and a brand new shoes. Right? If we want to tree this, because we can't table it. To table, we can only have two options, right? Tables have two options. But the tree, I'm going to start. Um, it's easiest to do smaller options than bigger options. So I'm going to start with one of my smaller options. Let's go shirts. Um, I'm actually going to make my tree go this way, just because how I, the screen that I have. So plaid and stripes, right? Then shoes. Sandals or tennis. And all that really matters is at the bottom, I'm going to go green. At the end, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve new outfits. Now, you want to see the trick that saves you from having to do all of this? Yeah. We have how many options for shirts? Two. Times how many options for shoes? Two. Times how many options for two times two times three? Is this. I am sorry, what? When we have this, if you had come to math counts yesterday, this and if you're interested in these problems, you can steal one. This is called the fundamental counting, or the fundament, the, 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 yes, the fundamental counting principle. When we're counting things and talking about how many things we can put together, we can say, I have two options of shirts times three options of shorts times two options of shoes gives me the total number of options. It's just like saying, my chance of getting a plaid shirt is one half times my chance of getting green shorts is one third and my chance of getting sandals is one half i get one twelfth the outfit i wear will be one of the twelve new outfits moving on to today's lesson is this yes this is examples from class so we need this out yeah Uh, yes, but it's not like stressful time. Yes, sir? You have 20 seconds! You have 8 seconds to solve. How difficult are the math problems? Um, Square root of 5! You guys asked me too many questions, I had a thought, and now I lost the thought. Sorry. Why do you think it's so hard to do? Hey, so, 5 to 4, 5 to 5, and 5 to 6 are due by the end of the day. Right, 524, 525, and 526. The purples, or orchids, if you will. <laughs> April, last day of it. It's for you to figure out how many days are in there. Four over three? Four to the ninth, over three to the ninth? Um, our lesson's in here somewhere. Oh, hey, there we go. Stand up, stand strong. 
song stand out, I think. I forget what it says on the back. Yeah, I donated and they sent me this shirt. Because I, I got scholarships when I went there, so it's kind of one of those things that you do to receive scholarships. It's kind of expected that when you're able to, you'll give back and donate to the scholarships. All right. Now, we, you may not know, hopefully you do since I'm your math teacher, we use math every day. What? No, it, no, it, no. It's pretty much impossible to not use math. But like, even if you tried, because your brain does it. Right? If, if you try to not use math and we're walking, if you try to not use math we're walking in the hallway towards each other, and we're walking right at each other, we are on lines that are going to intersect. And we know that when two people intersect, it causes a collision, and that's unenjoyable, so you divert. Your brain uses math, does a calculation, and makes an adjustment. So, nope, you're just trying to argue with me. We don't have time. I, I just took your homework questions. I now need to teach a lesson. If you're not arguing, fine. Twelve seconds. I'm just going to say, isn't like everything matters? Like, the weather Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Relationships between quantities. If you missed it on the top. Relationships between, uh, I don't know if there's an abbreviation for between, I'm not helped with all that, but quantities, that's a terrible abbreviation of the quantities because it would be IES, but singular quantities can be abbreviated TTY. So I'm going to go ahead and use that abbreviation, although it's wrong, because it would be IES. Yeah, B T Y is by the way. Yeah, B T W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. B T Y. <laughs> so, everybody, stop talking. I want you to test your brain for a moment. Situation one and situation two here. We're going to use the letters D and M for Dahlia and Maya. Maya? Shh. Shh. I want you on your paper beneath your situation. <laughs> to write an equation relating Myra and Dahlia and that number 15. No talking with each other. Below situations one and two, write, you don't have to draw a picture, I'm not going to make you draw 15 cookies or whatever. You don't have to draw a picture, notice I cut that out of your paper. I want you to write the equation using D, M, Underline key words. Like, if, don't answer these questions I'm asking. But, like, what does has mean in math? Or if we said have, like, I have. Oh, there, there might be a 10 involved also. I, I see a 15, but there might also be a, a 10, I guess, because I see a 10 in words up here. You might have multiple equations for these situations. You might write multiple equations here. If I told you I have three dozen eggs, What does has mean in math? Anyone? Equal. Right? Like what you have, what you what you get. So they tell us Myra has 15 marbles. Okay, well that's great. If I just gave you that and asked you to write an equation, you might think I've lost my mind because that would just be this. Myra has 15. Great. Way to go, Myra. You got marbles. Wonderful. Where are we? In the 1950s? Apparently. This is 10 less than Dahlia. Now, don't write this down. 
but I thought this was less than. Right? The alligator and the who has more and the... What? But, but that, I don't think, is what we're talking about here. Can anyone help me realize what, like, I'm not using that symbol? What am I doing, Lily? Really? Is what Dahlia has? So wait, so 15 is, is what you just said, and that, that's how I would write 15 is. What do I write on the other side of that? Ten less than Dahlia, right? Would it be ten minus B or B minus ten? Everybody box this or underline it or highlight it. Ten less than Dahlia. Less than does not, well it can mean that symbol, but less than means subtract from. Less than means Subtract from. So how we write that is B minus 10. 10 subtracted from Dahlia. 10 less than Dahlia is whatever Dahlia's got. Take 10 away. That's what I got. So 15 is Dahlia minus 10. Or we could say M is Dahlia minus 10. But if we go back to here, well, what number minus 10 is 15? What number should this be? 25. Dahlia has 25. Now stop, because this is where everybody like gets stuck and I get frustrated because I'm like, what? How? It doesn't make sense. Go, no, no, no. Like, when you give me an answer, and I have to mark it wrong, and I'm, like, pulling my hair off, I'm like, you didn't think. I know you were all very, very smart people, because I know you. I've known you for, like, five months now. I to, and we're with each other, like, ten hours a day. I know you pretty well. You're all really smart. When I ask you a question, and I'm asking, like, does this make sense? You're all really good at saying, no, it doesn't, or yes, it does. So, if what Myra has is... 10 less than Dahlia. Ask yourself, who should have more? Dahlia should have more. Because Myra has 10 less than her. So those of you that tried to tell me B is 5, when you would write that down and you go back and you ask yourself, does that make sense? It doesn't. Because Dahlia needs to have more than Myra. But, if we come to situation 2, This is phrased differently. Uh, I know, but it's all, uh, now it broke it up. Okay, now I'm losing. Read this one carefully, like dissect situation two. Myra has 15 marbles. Okay, M equals 15. Please draw a line, like dividing situation one and two if you haven't done that yet, because they're different. I didn't say straight, I said draw a line. What can I, should I tell you, draw a not straight line, or would that make you feel better? Draw a line that has um, 15. Okay. It's curvy, or it's like goes backwards, or is upside down. Backwards, it's curvy, but upside down line. Exactly. That's how Hold on. Dahlia has. So guys, anytime you see somebody has, or it's like, that's something equal. Dahlia has. 10 less than my, what's less than mean? Subtract from. So this is M minus, wait, so Dahlia has less than Myra. Dahlia has how much less than Myra? 10. Guys, if you need to, take the number out momentarily. Dahlia has less than Myra. Now Dahlia has 5, because it's Myra's amount minus 10. 
A tiny change in how we phrase something changes everything. Yeah, that's just funny. Like and this funny. is the trap door that I'm trying to help you guys avoid. Okay? So go ahead and look at 94. See if you can set that up on your own. We're going to draw a little picture. Ellie, go in the doll. I still want to have one of those. Well, I don't know if my niece wants to play in there. She's 16. I don't know if she wants to play in there. My niece, well, I used to say she's your age, but now that's not true. My niece is 16. Oh, my, my wife's brother is like from a previous marriage that his, uh, the, the mom had had. So, um, he's, I don't even know how old he is, but it's like they had her when they were like 24, 25. They were in the Air Force together. They got married when we were on base together. And, so Ellie is building a dollhouse. She has boards that are two different lengths. One long board. Underline this. Or highlight it, whatever you're using. One long board is. And stop. One long board is. Above that, on your paper, because you have space, what, what could you write for one long board is? L, right, the long board. What math thing is is? Equals. L equals. No. Seven I N squared. No. Stop. We have to chunk our sentences. Now, what the long board equals? Stop talking. Underline or highlight it on your paper. What is it that the long board actually equals? It's not seven inches. You need all of that highlighted because it's all important. So L equals seven inches longer than the total length of the curved board. Board, but yeah. And I don't have that highlighted because on your paper it's, it's right there with it. But guys, if you started writing L equals seven, you're immediately confused. Because that 7 doesn't come first. It could, because addition will work that way. But guys, longer than means added to something. If you need to write that down, write it down. It means added to. This is not 7. It's 7 longer than, which the 7 needs to add to something. The question you should be asking is what? What is the thing that we're adding it to? What's the length of it doesn't matter. How could we write three short boards? Three S. Three times S, right? Three short boards. So to write this out, my long board will be, and guys, you could write the seven first, but you should write it like with a gap in front of it to say, well, what are we adding the seven to? It's seven more than something. That something is three short boards. We're all good, right? I'm just back and forth you guys. As long as you're good. Are you all stupid? What? Wait. I'm asking them, are you all good? You're chatting a little bit, so I'm checking in. I thought you were like, I'm just trying to make you all stupid, Jeff. You know how sometimes people say you hear what you want to hear? Are you calling us stupid? Apparently, apparently Toby thinks Toby. some thoughts about his... Wow, Toby. I see your true colors. <laughs> Alright, so a long board... What? You don't ever just break into song and sing to you? No, nothing. You guys should come the other day in my house. So, one long board is 50 inches now, they tell us. We still don't know... Hey, bring it back. I should be able to break in a song and just get attention back, right? I mean, obviously. We now know 50 inches is our L. Plug it in. If we know L is 50, we could now figure out what the short board is. Because, guys, we'll learn some algebraic strategies to, like, work backwards and solve this. But just, just think for a second. What number 
would add with 7 and make 50. What number does this need to be? 43. So 3s must be 43. So how do we solve for what s is? Divide by 3. Now give me your eyes real quick. The algebra that we will need to write in the future when I like you know when you have to have this mastered, we would write minus seven on both sides. That's how we get to forty excuse me, forty-three equals three s. That's how we get there. And then we would show divide by three, divide by three. If you want to actually write out the accurate algebra, this is where we're going later this year. Like a month from now, you'll have to write the algebra out like that. You've got to show your work, and you've got to work vertically. So, do we have to do this one? And this is 13. Okay, 12? 14? 14. Point something. Is it? Point. No, it's not. 14.3 repeating? Yeah. What? What are you laughing at? You think he's got a calculator. He's got a calculator. You got a calculator. I did it in my head. You are a calculator. Mm -hmm. That's what Aurea was just saying. Aurea, what number did you actually use to start with? You didn't use the 43. You actually used... What do you mean? Okay, if you're trying to do this in your head, 42 is actually divisible by 3, right? Start to kind of try to get these tricks in your head of like 42 is divisible by 3. And then deal with the one third left over, right? One extra divided by 3. So 14.3. Uh, one more, then we'll get out of here. Diana. Oh no. Hold on, we'll skip. We'll go here because it's on your paper. This is trying to work on science. I want one more problem. It's okay. Do you want to finish? Do this is your last word. Okay, so. Two days till the exam. More than that. He also took the day when you guys are going to do science first. Label these as S. Label these as L. Label the little guys as S. You can do it above if you want. Label the big guys as L. In some sort of open space, we're going to write out what this looks like. So, what we see. You guys were right. Class change already happened. Yeah. Alright, so what is 2L equal? I should be using random cards, but I'm not because you know. Savannah, what's 2L equal? What? What? You're not even on the right problem with us. Put your sketch away. Get with us, dear. I need to see your notes at the end of class. What's 2L equal? 2L is 2S plus 10. 2S plus 10. Helps if we're looking at the right problem. Savannah, not trying to pick on you, but guys, it's January. Get some grit. Class isn't over till it's over. We. Crap. I don't know if we can solve this. Because I don't know what L is and I don't know what S is. Here we see 2. And four and five, but I'm not quite sure what we're gonna pick this up on Monday. How can we solve these situations? My challenge for you is solve the cookie one. My challenge for you is solve the cookie one.
You're better than that. Hey, you can't sketch in my class anymore. Until you talk to me and get permission back, I need to see some good, consistent notes.